Yeah. I bid her on this SC4, yeah. At a thousand bucks. Yeah. I bought it. 1550 bucks plus an auction fee, so probably 1700 for the NSC 400. That is a freaking steal. So as my Audi was running out, that SC400 was running through, so I sprinted straight over to it, and I got it for a total of $1,765. All right, where was my Lexus SC400? Here we go, a 1993 Lexus SC400, 149,000 miles, four liter, one UZ, V8, automatic transmission with leather interior. These cars are amazing. And this one's in great shape still. Here's what's cool about this car. My buddy, which I think I mentioned earlier, Dave, does manual conversions on these cars. How much does it cost? I don't know. Where do you get the five speed for this car? Probably from an SC300, I think, with a six cylinder manual. So I am assured that the transmission costs as much as I just paid for this car. Wow, this door doesn't open very wide. So it's probably not worth it for me to do, but it would be incredibly cool for me to have a manual converted V8 Lexus from the 90s, which I love. I love 90s these cars. Watch this gauge cluster. Let's see if it all works. What lights are gonna stay on? Your bag light? Nope, your bag light goes on. Freaking Toyota. Unbelievable. Toyota. And it's warm in here. What a car. Back in 93. They were just so far ahead of their game. Yeah, this car is still so clean. Uh, and a matter of fact, that's actually clean for leather that age. My best childhood friends, Dave, you know who you are. He did a manual swap conversion. Figured out how to do a manual SC300 swap five-speed conversion in this car. And that is his drift car project that he's currently working on. Fun fact, these are actually called a Soarer in Japan. So these come with the 2JZ Supra engine. So you can actually get a luxury Supra in these cars for a fraction of the price. You can get a turbo six-cylinder manual transmission Lexus SC300 and have it be a fraction of what the cost of a Supra is. So sometimes I like my job. Like, buying old cars is a gamble. That's a 95 Buick. If you've seen the video, it's cool. Supercharged, 3.8 liter V6. Like, the idea behind it is pretty awesome. 94 Mercury Cougar, 59,000 original miles, California car. No rust. Both are for sale. If you reach out to me on my website, both are for sale. But, you know, like, I'm, I don't have the time for a project. This one has pretty rusty because it came from New England. It's a real bummer and it's a real gamble. But I'm a sucker for 90s cars, especially Lexus SC 400s and 300s. Those are really, really cool cars. So I bought it at the auction. I paid $1,700 for it. I paid $1,965 after auction fees. So I'm into this car for about $2,000 before any expenses. We're gonna bring it into the shop. We're gonna go through it. It seems pretty solid. Then we're gonna have it detailed and then we're gonna try to sell it for a profit in this video. Now, what's really cool about this video too is that I have a Lexus aficionado. He is like oddly knowledgeable about Lexus. My buddy Dave built my uh, Eagle Talon for me and he's done some projects for me. He just has some really cool Lexus cars and some odd knowledge. So I'm gonna, before I even dive into this, we're gonna go right to his shop. I wanna learn about these Lexuses and teach you guys a ton of information. So let's go over to my buddy Dave's shop. This right here is a Toyota, not a Lexus, Toyota Soarer. What makes it any different than the Lexus SC300? Ah, I will show you. Number one, bummer, it's an automatic, but it is right-hand drive. This is a really, really cool looking car. Comes with the 2JZ, I believe. You guys will tell me if I'm wrong. Different front end, you can see the Soar emblem on the hood. Love the wheels. And the leather is in great shape, which is not normal for these cars. Usually they're all torn up and the dash is all cracked. This is in great shape for the year. Tough to find them in manual transmission though. I was really hoping this was a, a manual, not auto. Really cool to see these uh, in the US now. So I've been on my computer all day, noticed there was nothing in the fridge, so I was just about to head out to the grocery store to grab something for lunch, and this just showed up. My factor meals. Uh, my favorite day of the week, factor week. This week's pre-made meals showed up. What do we have today? Truffle butter filet mignon, jalapeno lime cheddar chicken, green peppercorn pork tenderloin, roasted garlic chicken, ground beef and thyme cottage pie with Parmesan buttered zucchini. And then a week's worth of wellness shots. I'm gonna have my truffle butter filet mignon. Put it in the microwave, a few minutes, hit start. Voila, that is my lunch for today. It's incredible that this is a home delivery meal that's this good. So if you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that Factor has sponsored a lot of our videos. I actually use Factor myself. I look forward to my meals every time it shows up on my front steps. They're chef prepared meals that are fresh, 
never frozen. Last night I went online, logged into my account, and I selected what I wanted to eat this week. It was delivered right to my doorstep today. I went through it all, put it in my refrigerator, and every day I get to pick out what meal I want to eat for myself. One of my favorite meals to order is from their Gourmet Plus menu, and it's their truffle butter filet mignon with carrots and mashed potatoes. If you want to try it for yourself, you can head to factor75.com or click the link right in the description down below and use code FLYINGWHEELS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next box while the subscription is active. I love it. Go try it out for yourself. Hey, guess who's here? The same guy that we did the Lexus LS400. We talked about Lexus and everybody's like, oh, that guy seems to kind of know his stuff. Craig, a little bit more than even you do. And that's not saying much. You are a Lexus guy. So I thought while we are on the SC3 and 400 series, mine, which I mentioned to you when I bought the car, I figured, hey, why not go see what Dave's all about and talk about the Lexus SC 300, 400, and Soarer, which I saw the other day. I saw an actual Soarer automatic. And your SC 400 1UZ drift car yeah. that I haven't seen off that lift in a long time. So I don't know whose car hasn't run in more time. I think yours. Yeah. Mine at least ran once and caught well, on fire with you. When it was running, I, I did run it more than you. So. Yeah. All right, let's talk about your cars real quick. A Sequoia yeah, TRD. Cool. If you see TRD, it typically means something really good on Sequoias, which is, boom, right there. This is a 1UZ V8. 2UZ. 2UZ V8. 1.7 iron block. Oh, the 1UZ is a what? All four? All aluminum, four, four liter. Four liter. Yeah. The 2UZ is a 4.7. Yeah. And <laughs> this comes supercharged because it's a TRD. It was a TRD option in the early generations uh, Sequoias. Came with a just you know supercharger, uh, ninth injector. It added not a ton of horse. I think it was like 50 or 70 horse. Did it take away from like the longevity and reliability of the engine? Not in this. Not if you didn't like increase the boost. If you started playing hmm. with the, uh, the it's pulley, reliable power. If you started playing with the pulleys and stuff like that, yeah. Funny you should mention that because over there, and I don't know if my Audi video has aired. You'll see an Audi A7 on the trailer once again. I love hate Audis. Hate that Audi. I just got it back from the dealer. $900 for a key. Yeah. I lost the key. $900 later, that was a mistake. That car runs like S because upgraded pulleys, intercooler, and a bunch of other tunes that somebody did to it. The car was probably awesome. They wanted 500 plus horsepower, ruin the car. These right here, this is your what, Dave? SC400, the one you see, V8. Nothing done to it, it's all just a stock car. I just went through all the services on it just to keep it good. Now, Toyota Lexus has been way ahead of the okay. times so like even what is it what year is this this is a 95 95 92 93 all of those like yeah. even if you look at just the headlights the projector lenses in the supra and the lexus is so far beyond anything else in the early 90s now if you get to this you go to the interior typically the leather interior is all destroyed by the now ah, there we go, go bad. they always go bad i i rarely see them clean which is why i was so surprised about mine but the rest of it's not Automatic I mean, passenger seats, decent. Now they just dry out and yeah. they get really brittle. Yeah, luckily they, so. there is covers, um, replacement covers. I don't like, they look like factory. You can mm -hmm. really close to them. But what do you think this is worth, condition it sits? I mean, it's it's still a straight body. It's solid. Actually, underneath this thing is the cleanest of all three that I own. Really? Yeah. Where'd this come from? Actually, Salem, New Hampshire. No kidding. Yeah. All right. So let's move so, on. Does the gold tags, the gold bot, yeah. em like emblems mean anything? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just a little bit rarer. Wait a minute, I mean, those taillights. Yeah, so are different than these taillights. 96, 97 to 2000. This is like the desirable body. It's got a little bit of a lip kit you can see on it. This from here looks like a Supra. Why well, does these, this look like a Supra? So those, this has a Supra twin turbo wheels on it, two T brakes on it. Um, this one's a bit nicer inside. Uh, I put some Recaro seats in it. Oh yeah, in a manual transmission. Now this is an SC300. Yeah, so this is a 98, first year of the VVTi. They no longer offered them in a manual 98 on. Is this a 2JZ non-turbo? Yeah, 2JZ GE VVTi because it's a 98. Mm -hmm. This um, would be the Supra engine without the turbo option. Yeah, non-turbo Supra. Yeah, okay. Um, although they didn't offer the um, 400s in manual either. Yeah. So that one in there is wait, actually manual. Wait, wait. Don't say that yet to anybody. I Don't say that yet. Retract those words. Yeah, so this is your SC 300, yes. 300, meaning six cylinder, 400, four liter. Is this a three liter? Three liter, inline six, hence the 300, four liter V8. Can you pop the hood so people can see what two JZs look like? There we go. Inline six cylinder VVTi. Were previous gens VVTi also? No. 
98 was the first year of the VVTi. Same in uh, the SC400, right? Yes, 98. Yep. Was yep. The, uh, okay, you get into VVTi. And they actually, in 400 VVTi's, when you see VVTi, is a really nice motor. Not a fun fact. I'm not a Toyota fan. Okay, I it's get okay. it. I'm not an Audi fan. I get. I am not an Audi fan either. I get why you love them. You're like a lot of your cars have 300,000 plus miles or yeah. have had 300,000 plus miles in the past. So I get why you love Toyota. I get rusty Tundras, rusty Sequoias. And the one Sequoia I bought, starter is under the intake manifold. It was like ridiculous to replace a starter. Engineering, Toyota engineering. I mean, if you're if you're mechanically inclined, you can work on stuff, it's not bad. That was a shot at me, I think. That was a shot at me. I actually just had to do the starter on this one. I mm -hmm. put the OEM starter, I would, it had 206,000 miles on it, it's 95. Original starter. So it's in the middle of that V, like you said, the V8, mm -hmm. it's high and dry, it's, they last. I mean, yeah, it, it might take a couple hours to do it. So the way you said that, they last, okay. So we had just talked about how this six cylinder comes with a manual transmission option, the one UZ, the two UZ, not, but the one UZ in that, the four liter, does not come in a manual transmission option. Or does it? It does if you know this guy. What am I talking about, people? This right here. This has taken up a lot of space for a long time. Dave, I'm gonna go through this a little bit and then you tell me everything really. Still, 1UZ, four liter V8, right? Stock yeah. internals, but it's been no. completely rebuilt, right? No. Oh, it's, it's not? It's all fully forged internals. Um, so it's got CP pistons, um, Eagle rods, upgraded hardware on the rods, um, ACL race bearings. It's got the ARP head studs now with the MLS head gasket so that it can handle the boost because um, otherwise you'll, you won't be able to do a stock. Right. Um, Fun uh, fact, built by my uncle, Yes. Uncle Mike, at Malden Machine. Yep. Malden Machine. Brought it to him in pieces, a little just hand it over the block, just carry it all. You know, it's aluminum V8, so everything's super lightweight. Mm -hmm. Your headers are backwards. Yeah, uh, forward facing manifold. Did you... You did some of this welding fabrication, didn't you? Yeah, I did all the all, all oh. the fab besides the engine work. So this is going to be sitting right about here. That's why the manifolds are facing forward. Yeah, even for a uh, V8, there's still a lot of space in this engine bay. Um, that's because I moved everything forward. So this uh, okay. radiator is you can see it's tucked underneath the radiator. Mm -hmm. board. These tabs actually used to hold the radiator right here. So everything was so much farther back. Plus you had a fan. Any idea what you're expecting for power when you're finished? The motor's built for just over a thousand. Um, honestly, I always go a little above and expect overbuild. Less. Yeah, right. Because over-engineered, just like they did for yeah. the factory. Right. Um, you know, I like old stuff. That's awesome. Z wheels fit on it, huh? So, so you will see a manual have... transmission in there with your hydro handbrake, your hydraulic handbrake. Yep. You fabricated this transmission from what transmission? So What'd you get to fit? This has a CD09 from out of a uh, Z. Z. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Holy moly. You're going to be moving sideways on this, like completely sideways. Wow. That is really impressive. So this is a cool project I wanted to share with you guys because I wanted you to learn about SC3 and 400s, and there really is no better person to teach you about those things than this person. Mine, we bought it to sell. I would love to do a manual transmission and keep it. And honestly, I have so many projects. I'm in the midst of getting rid of all my projects. Looks like you have plenty of projects as well. Yeah, between my stuff and kids stuff. Yeah, so it's really accumulates over stuff. the years. I'm trying to get rid of things. The SC400, I love the car. It'd be cool for a project. Don't have time for projects. I gotta move metal. We're just gonna get rid of this thing, clean it, detail it, fix it. So at the end of this video, it will be sold. And hopefully you guys learned some information. Dave, thank you so much. Let's move on to the next segment. So we're back at my shop. Sneak preview. This is a G37S Coupe 6-speed. Check this car out real quick. Just picked this up at the auction. Rear-wheel drive, 6-speed manual transmission. I was bidding on it from that angle. It was in a rush. I was in a rush. I went against everything I say, and I bid on it, won it. So come to find out, this door is all banged up. So that's a real... Real bummer, whatever, we can get past that. Now the shop's going well. If you remember German, German was awesome. He maintained all of the shop and he was an awesome detailer. German retired and I think we found a replacement. So I have Devin, Devin the detailer, which is on Instagram now. If you might have seen him in some of our videos, Devin the detailer is crushing it. I'm gonna have him go on the Lexus. He loves being on camera. I think he's pretty camera friendly. So tell him in the comments how well he's doing. Devin the detailer, I'm gonna leave it to him. I have to go to Florida for a trip for work. Uh, when I get back, that car should be all set and we can list it up for sale. A few minutes later. We got the rotors off, no rust underneath. Pretty clean car. Go over to the other side. 
It's a nice car. All right, guys. So right here, we got our Lexus 2003 V8 engine. At least I believe it's a V8 engine. I'm going to be detailing this car up real quick. It's getting kind of dark, so I'll try to make it fast as possible. Got some marks right here. We'll see if we can gotta get that out. We did have this car detailed by a couple of uh, subcontractors. I'll be doing the finishing touches, like this stuff like this. We'll shine all this up. Everything that's black will all be shining when I'm done. V8, like I said. It's a nice car, obviously fast. <laughs> but there's a little, uh, little stuff like this. We're gonna try to compound that out, but a lot of this is really just paint problems. So you won't actually be able to get that out with the polish or compound. But we'll try to alleviate what we can. So this. Try to get all that out. But I figured I'll show you guys the car. We'll go ahead and detail this up and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. Order. We got the trunk all cleaned out, got the trash all thrown away, got it all vacuum squared away. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this fumatic air hose. Not exactly necessary, but it definitely does help to get in these tight to get spaces. So if you don't have one, it's not really necessary to have, but this definitely helps to get in these areas and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And you can even see the amount of dust that actually flies around even after vacuuming it. All right, so now that we got it all blown out, use the thematic hose on it. I'm gonna go ahead and take the vacuum again because I don't wanna try to blow it all out. It's just gonna get back right into the crevices. So you just wanna blow it into an area where you can then vacuum it and then you can get it all done. Okay, so right here inside the hood, we have a lot of sticky residue that we can't really get off with just the rag and a uh, cleaner. So what I'm actually gonna do is take some goof off and take a wire brush. Now this wire brush isn't as aggressive as one of these, so it'll be a lot more gentle on the paint. But all I usually do is just take one of these, dip this out of the can, hopefully I'll tip it over. You see it's dripping on here. You can just use this kind of scrub. And the rest of that stuff. And that wasn't coming off of that. And we're just gonna do that to the whole drum. One eternity later. All right, so we got this all goofed off. I have the products right over here, just in case you wanted to see. It's right here. This is, again, a wire brush that's not too aggressive, like a regular wire brush, so it's not gonna really damage the paint. So I got everything that I could get off with that wire brush, but as you can see, there are originally some scrape marks that are already here. I'm gonna try to hit this with a 320 sandpaper. But I think this color right here will match great. These cans of spray paint are a bit expensive, so I don't wanna use too much. I just wanna kinda cover up some of these scrape marks. Brought out over here, I got a 320 grit sandpaper pad. I'm just gonna hand sand it because like what I did with that Ford over there, I use a fumatic sander on the whole trunk just because it's a lot easier, but I'm not gonna be doing this whole trunk. I'm just gonna be touching up some of these scrape marks. So I'll kind of hand sand down some of these scrape marks. This is all paint damage. We're not gonna touch any of that. We wanna keep this car original because it's a 93. Plus we really wouldn't do any paint correction above the bumper anyway, as Craig likes to call it an eyesore and he is, and he is right. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off real quick. I'm gonna sand down all of these scrape marks just a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and correct all these scrape marks. All right, just sanded down all the parts that we needed to sand down. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit it with this custom spray paint that has four cars. Beautiful. Just finishing up with the hood, got it all cleaned down. Also got the top too. Now what I'm gonna do, take my tire shine and a new rag, or a different rag I should say. And I'm gonna shine up all the black parts, the battery, all the plastic, fuel pump, and make it all shiny. shine tire spray under the hood all complete only thing left that needs to be done now is just a compound to the car hopefully it takes out a lot of this but this does seem to be pain issues so that's likely gonna stay but we'll see how much it comes back just a compound and polish then we'll throw everything back in here 
and then we are all done with the Lexus. All right, so we're getting started putting everything back in the trunk over here. We have our spare tire. I just wiped it down real quick so it's not dirty. And what I'm actually gonna do is take the tire shine that I was using, and I'm actually gonna spray down this wheel before I put it back into the trunk. Already did it to these tires. You should wipe it off after you spray it, just for a better appeal. Now I'm just gonna clean the other side so I'm gonna throw it back into the trunk. It doesn't get it all dirty again. Really no purpose of shining this side because it's gonna be face down anyway. All right, so we're here with the Lexus, the 93. And I started compounding it. I got everything all set up over here. I got my McQuire's Speed Compound. I started half the hood. I figured this would be a good time to start showing you exactly what this will turn out into. It's starting to fade a little bit, or come back, I should say, a little bit. This side of the hood I have not done yet, but I'm going to try to go over as, as much as possible. I don't want to put swirl marks into the paint, because if you do use this too aggressively or too long on one spot, it'll actually put swirl marks into the paint. So I'll try not to put any swirl marks, but I do want to put a lot of attention into this because of how faded it is. It's not going to come back completely, but I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. minutes later so as you can see i did half the hood i actually went over it twice and it looks like it's coming back just a little bit it seems like it has a little more shine to it so we'll go ahead and get this whole thing done all right so we got the hood all compounded i actually went over it twice not really sure if it made a difference it definitely looks glossier i guess really the only way you're going to be able to tell is the before and after but if anybody really wants that to come out it just really needs to be repainted every time you compound a car you do want to wipe off all the compound and then once i'm done compounding this whole car i will be polishing it i wanted to bring this to an attention i don't know if it's really showing up on camera but there's little watermarks that were kind of stuck inside the clear coat and the compound pad was actually doing a very good job at actually getting off the watermarks so if you have any watermarks any droplet marks that are inside the clear coat compound and a uh, compound pad should be able to get it out all right so one thing i wanted to mention i just actually saw this little white mark here i don't know if you can see it that well it actually wasn't coming out while washing the car or even scraping it with my nail but it was actually starting to come out with the compound pad so i actually wanted to show that And as you see, no more mark. All right, I know. This trunk needs Jesus. We're not going to be able to fix this. <laughs> so does my sanding pad. But we'll see if we can make it better. All right, we just got this car all compounded. I did the hood compounded twice. So that's the result of that. I showed you guys the trunk also. Did this twice with the compound. That is what it is. What it is. We got the roof. I didn't show the roof because I felt like it was just going to be repetitive. So we got the roof compounded twice again. That also is what it is. But the rest of the car compounded once. It is looking a little shinier. A lot of dust actually accumulated on it. And my airline is actually frizzy up on me because it's getting cold. So there's a car compounded. Got my polisher and my polishing compound. Or I should say polishing agent. Ultra Pro Finish Polish. Meguiar's. Got the prom uh, compound pad. Polishing pad. And we're gonna get this all polished up. All right, so right here we got our finished product of the Lexus. We have it all polished, compounded, some parts, two. Right here we did two, top, trunk. The rest was all done once, all polished once. And this is the finished product. I wanted to show it while it's still daytime, but I did get caught up. But on this side, I wanted to show you guys, there's actually a bunch of paint splatter back here. All this paint splatter. So what I'm gonna do is take this medium reducer. It's like a paint thinner and it is safe for the cars. So I'm just gonna splash them off in here. And then I'm gonna kind of rub a little bit aggressively. Let's see if this comes out. Perfect. And right there, as you can see, all the medium reducer got off all the paint spotter that was stuck to the car. It did take a bit of scrubbing, but it did get it all off. And as you can see, it did not damage anything underneath. A few days later. The Lexus leaves today. I kind of wanted to keep it. Everything has to go though. And the Lexus is gone. Driving in the snow. See you later. So, end of the video. Sometimes my videos go a little bit longer than they should. Obviously, it's there's no more snow. I sold the Lexus SC400 in winter. Like maybe 
a month and a half ago, but you know, the video kind of sat on my cutting room floor for a while. So we ended up selling it for $5,000, which is a very fair price for that car. A rust-free, clean SC400 with clean leather, no cracked dash, great body, like sun damage, that's it. Guy bought it, loved it, took off with it. We ended up making about $3,000 on that car. Now, that's before expenses. All the labor, like we paid $2,000, all the, we didn't have to do much as far as repairs go. Uh, it was just labor, like Devin's labor, putting his time into detailing it, getting it ready for sale. Lauren's time marketing it and selling it. Cost for commissions, cost for doing business. So like internet, principal, interest, mortgage on the property. Uh, like all the expenses get taken out of how much you make. So you have your gross profit, which is like, hey, you, you paid two, you sold it for five, you made three. That's not real. Then you deduct all of your expenses. Like how much, how many cars do you sell every single month? and then divide that by your expenses and that's how much it costs you per car. Deduct that from your gross profit as well and then you know how much you really made. Then take a third of that and put it towards taxes. So we probably made, maybe made two, maybe made 1800 on it. So maybe made 1500 on it after expenses depending on how many cars we sell in a month. That's a general idea of how the business works. We didn't sit on it very long. That car moved pretty quickly versus like that Audi has been, where is it right here? Sitting for far too long, that Kia. Uh, which just brought to my attention that I've had it for a year. That car almost has a birthday, which is making me sick. Nobody likes the color. So that's how the business works generally. I hope this was informative, educational. If it was, make sure to subscribe because I'm putting content out like this all the time. And then thanks to Dave for giving us a plethora of Lexus knowledge. And then did I already say subscribe? Thumbs ups, just help me help my videos perform better. And then we read the comments. So let us know what you think of this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Adios.